you <coughs> came out of the global financial crisis okay. Uh, you finished up in 2010. Yep. Uh, and then, I guess, you go home, the 18-year career in investment banks, prop trading has come to an end. Mm. Uh, what did you do in the period between leaving uh, the investment banks and joining the institute last year? Um, caught up on my sleep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, one of the features of the city is you know, the market opens at eight o'clock London time. So basically, everyone's on their desk by latest seven o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, you know, you're 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 used to a completely different. Um, body clock really I mean also for me although I mainly traded Europe and UK as I mentioned I, I did a lot of trading in Australia as well and that's the completely wrong time yeah. uh, in terms of sleep so basically the phone is right by your bed the whole time and you and you're getting called literally in the middle of the night by your brokers in Australia yeah. um, particularly when you know there are sort of unforeseen events happening in the market and yeah. you know decisions need to be made so you know not being flippant actually caught up on my sleep um, I did you know it's very it's addictive mm. so you know when I started at Barclays we had the largest trading floor bar none mm. in the city and you know that, that those it's kind of like a pressure cooker environment and you're sat there surrounded by screens and you know some noisy individuals some not so noisy but it's uh it's a really quite indescribable environment for people that haven't actually been on the trading floor and so getting used to you know not getting up when it's still dark most of the time yeah. not going in and you know having a whole sort of host of people basically feeding you information the yeah. brokers ringing you up going into your morning meeting to discuss what risk you've got on mm -hmm. to discuss what we think is going to happen today and how we're going to play it suddenly when that's not there it's you yeah. actually kind of feel almost a bit useless actually yeah I mean I've still obviously got my own personal portfolio but yeah. managing that is not the same as managing institutional money where sure. you're literally in you've got information overload it's fantastic you know you're sat at the center of all this great flow of information in fact you've actually got too much of it you're almost kind of you know drowning in it yeah so and that for that to suddenly stop is just it's very strange so initially <coughs> you know i need to sort of i'm one of those people that needs to have a bit of structure so mm. um you know great big piece of that structure was taken away obviously when you're not going into the office so um, I literally just had to find a lot of other ways to fill my time and now it's actually it, it's sort of a question of actually I, d I don't know where all the time goes now but mm. initially you kind of sat there thinking well the phone's not ringing um, you know Jesus it's eight o'clock what's going on but mm. of course you're not in the same environment sure. so um, you know I th I did a lot of things I you know I did some property projects yeah. um, I did a little bit of, uh, of corporate advisory business because during the course of my career I also um, got involved at a certain point um, with some of the smaller cap companies um, on you know some of the aim listed stuff yeah um, which put me in a different kind of network so through that network um, I got some advisory business and corporate advisory business um, <clears throat> I spent a lot of time flying as in actually flying myself because yeah. I started to learn to fly when I was at TD okay. um, and so I finished my pilot's license and then I've done a, a shed load of flying cool. uh, private flying since nice um, you know lots of really good tours around Europe and then over to Ireland around the Baltic and up to Scotland all kinds of things so yeah. that's been you know really fantastic for me um, and uh, I've got quite a high maintenance wife who likes to travel so um, that's also um, feel part of the, the time as well but basically I suppose just become a lot more entrepreneurial yeah um, that's the that's the big difference is you know you don't have that structure it's, it wasn't a nine-to-five structure but it was still a structure yeah so it's um, you know it's a lot more varied now and of course now that I'm involved with the Institute as well that's given me a completely different element because teaching in itself is actually a different skill yeah um, and I have to say you know, it's 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 reinvigorated my passion for the markets. It's uh, obviously, you know, having had a, such a long career in 
financial markets, you can't be anything but enthusiastic about engaging with the markets. But the teaching gives you a totally different element because it's just fantastic to take some guys who, by the time they get to me, they've already done the PTM, so they have a certain base level of knowledge. Mm. But you're really taking almost, um, you know, kind of a rough diamond and yeah. polishing it up through the mentoring process. So we get them from a situation where they've got the knowledge base, but they're probably very nervous about pulling the trigger. And, you know, within two to three months, these guys are confidently putting positions on, understanding why they're putting positions on, understanding the risks that they're taking, because it is about measured risk taking. Mm. You can't, you know, it's that risk reward trade off. Yeah. And watching these guys basically fly. Yeah. And it's, you know, even though the mentoring course can be three months or six months, we never actually lose contact with these guys. You know, we're always going to have the door is always open. I've still, you know, I'm still in contact with the very first guys that yeah. I mentored, and you know, we've always got information and questions going backwards and forwards. Sure. And it's just awesome to see where they've come from and yeah. where they are now in in such a short period of time. Yeah.